Right. Yesterday, I did a talk on React Native, GitHub Fabric, uh, React Native Fabric Architecture, GitHub Issue 4, Read Through Part 1. So I looked, I searched React Native Fabric on YouTube, and my result, my video is shown right here. It's kind of strange. This thing, integration of Fabric Crashlytics, is like not even relevant. But whatever. YouTube algorithms. Anyways, so this is where I left off yesterday. Uh, so this guy, Jun Ho Cho, he has some problem with React navigation. And he thinks it's not performant enough. And he's wondering, will the synchronous communication between native and JS, uh, would it enable the use of native table view with sales being rendered in JS? And the response to that, well, Fabric is a foundation that helped things improve the navigation. Uh, Fabric itself will not solve those problem, navigation problems, but will enable actual solutions. So, uh, and then he's interesting. Uh, he's interested in knowing in the new React native architecture whether the renderings can be even synchronized because the iOS UI table view requires synchronized rendering of cells. That means React should render return native cells to table in the synchronized way. Will this kind of behavior be supported? And the answer is yes, which is why it's very exciting. But uh, it uh, doesn't necessarily uh, will implement using UI table view. So that's what he's saying. Okay, so moving on. <coughs> moving on. Ugh. When Fabric reaches beta, we'll be able to use both JIS and the bridge at the same time. So he's wondering if it's backward compatible. Um, so the response to that is, well, the system allows Fabric to be compatible, Fabric compatible components and the existing view manager based components. So yes, it will be backward compatible, but at some time in the future, all the components needs to be Fabric. So this architecture is serious. Uh, will Fabric comes with big list optimization by default? Um, so apparently this issue was talked about previously. Yes, it is. Yes. Will Fabric bring new API like sync storage? No, because Fabric is just a UI layer. Sync storage is something that could benefit from synchronous calls, but uh, uh, so that's something, that's another uh, thing. So that's turbo modules. Okay, so turbo modules is um, synchronously work with native modules. Um, Fabric is just synchronously on the UI layer. Uh, is this JISI project going to be open source? If so, when can we view it? And it's already landed on master on October 29th, 2018. All right. Cool. So this guy, Rat Jagatagar, the biggest concerns I've seen in React Native today is the large list, the navigation, Android overflow in hybrid apps, lazy bundle loading to improve boot time, or lack of, debugging code in app runtime. Okay, so what's the response to that? Uh, so, Fabric enables solutions to these problems. So that's for list and navigation. Because as far as we can tell, that navigation in React Native doesn't really work well with native navigation. Uh, however, uh, with synchronous fabric architecture, it's going to enable these solutions to be fixed, which means we have to wait more. And Android overflow in hybrid apps, lazy bundling to improve boot time, debuggable app in the runtime. Well, so these are all separate issues, um, but they are not related to Fabric. So Fabric is just for the UI re-architecture. Um, so his follow-up is, I've seen this commit and for Android Overflow. What is this Android Overflow? Add support for Overflow style, Overflow style property on React Native. Okay. Cool, so if you guys know what this overflow property style on Android, let me know or make a video about it and then I'll comment on that. 
Um, so he's this guy's really excited. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. Does fabric fix most of? Does fabric fix the most annoying part of React Native? Layout animation, which cannot be started using the use native driver option. Okay. All right. So the response to that is the role and the concrete implementation of native drivers in Fabric is still not clear. We hope that the Fabric sync nature can enable new approaches to solve these problems efficiently. So I think what he's saying is that Fabric, uh, so the height and weight of the animation, height, the width and the height of the animations cannot be started using the use native driver option. Uh, again, if you guys know anything about the use native driver option, uh, look it up and tell me. Curious, but I'm not curious enough to make a video alone about it. Maybe in the future. Okay, so already six minutes in. So the C++ native modules become first class documented Iron universe. So his response is ideally, you can write native in C++. Interesting. Is that is that doable? Ideally, with a new Fabric rewrite, we would generate a native SVG rendering library interface from web IDL spec to cover the entire API. Use Rust implementation for processing and rasterizing it. This makes a smaller wrapper with the Java Objective-C glue to the view hierarchy. I do not understand this. What is this? talking about, as well as any other native environment with single cross-platform, efficient memory, thread safe. Web IDL, specified, Web IDL specified API will allow much more existing JavaScript to run against SVG implementations. This would make sense. Uh, this would make sense to name this something else other than Rack Native SVG. This would be more of an embedded SVG engine, which could be embedded when you need SVG rendering. So, okay, let's just read the conclusion because we don't know what's going on. I saw, also, I think the next generation animation driver, it would be ideal to get rid of heap allocations and auto boxing from property updates, as this kind of, as this can be a kind of inner loop of certain animations and it would avoid causing any garbage collection as far as possible, which can make it jitter-free, 60 frames per second, hard to achieve. Okay, I don't understand. But basically, this is turbo modules, C++ native modules, that is turbo modules. Okay. Will existing React Native apps be able to upgrade? Okay. Glimpse of fabric. Before we communicate it, can I start reading code? There's some parts. Um, don't dip your toe into it for now. So let's everybody hold your horses. We'll have to uh, uh, stay on top of this for a bit because uh, this is coming. If I were to give you a rough estimate, I would say you should not expect Faber to be out in the wild for at least a couple more months. So I'm thinking three or four months. This is November, so December, so December, uh, January, that's two months, February, three months, March. So I'm expecting this to be March or May when this come out, because uh, React Native 5.8 came out today. So I think, uh, where did this pen come from? I think uh, with 5.8 coming out, uh, I think this is going to... It's only a matter of time before this comes up. All right. In December 15th, will React Native Core consider officially support more platforms? Uh, nope. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care about React Native Windows, React Native Android and iOS. Started working on a side project as a web developer, stumbled on a pair of photos. I got excited. General concept is grasped. What are the differences in dev experience for those who decide to write custom native modules and contribute back to native? If you use custom native module that is not UI related, turbo modules, 
if you're talking about some custom view component, you should probably need to refactor those native components to adopt the new APIs. So the, it seems like the new APIs are in C++. Fabric is going to require any changes in how JavaScript is written? I don't think so. Um, but breaking changes. So ideally, it's going to be a smooth transition. So yeah, we'll see. So this is referenced into uh, some other one. So when is this? This is referenced nine days ago. So, huh. Well, it's been 10 minutes. So you guys have to uh, watch my video next time to go through this.